In chapter 10, we're going to talk about adverse selection in insurance markets. So to introduce this concept, first, uh, imagine this. You're an insurance salesman. Somebody walks into your door offering to make a deal. And they say that they want to purchase an insurance policy that would cover one day if and only if they die in the next 24 hours, you would have to pay out to their family or heirs $1 million. Do you take that deal? And how much do you charge for it? You might be thinking to yourself, maybe this person has some kind of information. Why do you want to buy an insurance policy for the next 24 hours? Are you about to die? You know? So that would be an example of where asymmetric information is likely to exist and could be a real problem. Asymmetric information is when the consumer has more information about their risks than the insurance company is able to accurately observe. And that can become a problem for insurance companies because they need to match what they're receiving in premiums to what they're going to be paying out in um, benefits. If asymmetric information is a real problem in insurance um, markets, or if it is a feature of these insurance markets, there are three phenomena, phenomena that we can expect to see. So the first one is that there would be a positive correlation between risk and coverage, meaning that the higher risk customers want to get the fullest insurance contracts. Otherwise, everybody would want to be equally avoiding risk. Second would be a phenomenon of bulk markups. So bulk discounts, it's like when you go to Costco and it's a lower per unit price because you're buying it in bulk. Bulk markups is exactly the opposite. It's when you have a higher per unit price when you're doing a large purchase. And that's because insurance companies would want to protect themselves against potential unknown risks when a person wants to buy a lot of insurance coverage. Finally, there would be this phenomenon of the adverse selection death spiral. It's a scary phrase. Uh, you might have heard it before, and it means that it's something that happens when insurance markets unravel. In the insurance market, there are both healthy and sick people who are sharing a pool, and the premium that they're paying is the average across all of them, which means that the healthy people are kind of indirectly subsidizing the sick people who end up drawing out those benefits. So if you're a person whose expected payout is less than that average $10,000 premium that they're charging to everybody, you might want to leave because it would be an unfair contract if your premium is greater than your expected payout. Well, then the next year, all those 10,000 and less people leave. Now the average premium across those who remain would increase to 15,000. Well, there might have some, been some people who were kind of on the fence before, but now that it's increased to 15000 now they'll drop out. And then it's like the cycle continues from there. That's an adverse selection death spiral. So now we'll look at some empirical evidence of these phenomena. So empirical evidence for adverse selection. In the RAND health insurance experiment, um, individuals, they did a lot of interviews, and people were actually able to predict their healthcare costs pretty well, and they were able to do that better than the insurance company is able to, which suggests asymmetric information. And also families with the highest predicted costs were more likely to want to get that additional supplemental insurance, which suggests a positive correlation between risk and coverage. And there are actually a lot of studies that show a positive risk coverage correlation in a variety of insurance markets. One of those in particular also finds evidence of an adverse selection death spiral. So it was among um, professors at Harvard. They had a PPO, which is a much narrower, or no, it's a, it's a wide, sorry, a PPO, it's a preferred provider organization. It's a wider network and it has a higher premium at $361 than the HMO, the health maintenance organization, which is a narrow network. Um, and they have like gatekeepers, you know, your, your primary care physician has to refer you to specialty care, things like that. So at first, um, there was about 18% of these professors who were willing to pay the extra premium for the PPO. But from 1994 to 1995, some people decided to leave. They didn't think that that premium was worth it, and they switched to the HMO. And so the premium 
and the HMO is still zero in 94, but the premium and the PPO increases because the less healthy people were those who stayed. Um, the premium almost doubles, actually more than doubles to $730. And then the next year, the same thing happens. The PPO premium increases again, like doubles again to more than 1400 and enrollment declines to 9% while the relatively healthier members of the PPO switched over to the HMO. So in the next video, we'll talk about evidence against adverse selection in different kinds of insurance markets. So there is evidence that it happens sometimes, but it doesn't happen all the time.